eukaryotic cell parts and functions. Describe the structure and function of the nucleus. What are two locations within a eukaryotic cell where ribosomes can be found? Describe the structure and function of mitochondria. Describe the structure and function of lysosomes. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com, where we believe that if you're really going to learn AP Bio, you've got to interact and get feedback. That's what happens on learn-biology.com. We're so sure of that, that your subscription comes with a money-back guarantee. Describe the structure and function of the nucleus. So the nucleus's function is to store and protect genetic information in the form of DNA. That DNA is wrapped around proteins to form chromosomes. This representation here is only present during mitosis or meiosis when cells are, are dividing. Otherwise, the DNA is more diffuse and spread out. It's still in chromosomes, but we call the form chromatin. The nucleolus is this dark part in the center of the nucleus, and it assembles ribosomes. The entire nucleus is surrounded by a membrane that separates the chromosomes from the cytoplasm, and the nuclear membrane has pores that allow molecules to enter and leave the nucleus. Important among those are messenger RNA, which leaves the nucleus, goes into the cytoplasm, where it's transcribed into proteins, and various transcription factors that come into the nucleus to turn genes on or to turn them off. Describe the structure and function of ribosomes. Ribosomes are particles composed of ribosomal RNA and protein. They consist of a large subunit and a small subunit. Their function is to read a genetic message encoded in a sequence of messenger RNA and to translate that message into a sequence of amino acids that make up the primary structure of a protein. The details of translation protein synthesis will occur in unit six. What are two locations within a eukaryotic cell where ribosomes can be found? Ribosomes can be free or bound. Free ribosomes, shown at three, float freely within the cytoplasm, which is number five. Bound ribosomes, shown at four, are connected to the membrane of the rough ER. All ribosomes start out as free, though through a process called protein targeting, they migrate to the ER to become bound. They do that if the proteins that the ribosomes are creating are destined to be put inside a vesicle so they can go to the Golgi or the membrane or a lysosome. Describe the structure and function of mitochondria. Mitochondria are shown here in the context of an animal cell. Here's a larger image. The function is converting food energy into ATP. That's the molecule that cells use to get work done. The key structures, there's a chromosome that consists of DNA. There are also ribosomes, which aren't shown in this diagram. Evidence of endosymbiosis. There's an inner membrane. It's highly folded that increases surface area. And that's because there are many membrane embedded enzymes and proteins, one of which is shown at five, that are involved in the process of ATP synthesis. The mitochondria, as a former independent cell, has its own cytoplasm. It's called the matrix. It has enzymes for the Krebs cycle and enzymes that perform other functions. There's an intermembrane space, which is an important cellular compartment that enables the mitochondrion to produce ATP. We'll see how that works in unit three. And there's an outer membrane that is a vestige of endosymbiosis. Describe the endoplasmic reticulum, the ER, and list its two forms. The ER is an interconnected series of channels found between the nuclear membrane over here and the Golgi body in eukaryotic cells. So here's the ER, and it consists of two forms. There's the rough ER and the smooth ER. Describe the structure and function of the rough and smooth ER. Well, the rough ER is studded with ribosomes. That's what all these little dots are over here. And using those ribosomes, the rough ER synthesizes proteins for inclusion in lysosomes, in other organelles, in the membrane, or for export from the cell. The smooth ER is on the outer side of the ER network, always towards the Golgi, and it lacks ribosomes, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing in that membrane. It has many membrane-embedded enzymes, and the functions of the smooth ER vary by tissue. So it can include synthesis of lipids, converting toxins into soluble forms that can be excreted from the body, carbohydrate breakdown, and synthesis. 
Describe the structure and function of the Golgi complex. The Golgi is a series of membrane-bound flattened sacs, and you'll remember that flattening increases surface area. The Golgi receives vesicles from the rough and smooth ER and chemically modifies their contents. So here's the rough ER, here's the smooth ER, here's the Golgi, and here's a vesicle bringing something from the ER system to the Golgi. The Golgi packages those modified proteins into vesicles, shown at six, that are sent to organelles like lysosomes over here at seven, to the cell membrane, or exported from the cell. Describe the structure and function of lysosomes. Here's a lysosome over here. Here's a lysosome over here. And one thing that I rarely say, but I'll let you know that you will almost certainly never have to identify a lysosome on a diagram on the AP Bio exam. It's just a big vesicle. Lysosomes are membrane-bound organelles that contain hydrolytic enzymes. They're only found in animal cells. They carry out intracellular digestion. So like, for example, here you see a particle, it actually looks like a cell that's being engulfed by the membrane. It'll be packaged into a vesicle, and that vesicle will be sent to a lysosome where hydrolytic enzymes will break this down. The lysosome also recycles worn out, damaged, or excess organelles and molecules, and it plays a key role in a process called apoptosis, the P is silent, that's programmed cell death, and we'll talk about that later in the course. The cytoskeleton is a dynamic network of protein fibers, and those fibers make up the bones, the skeleton of the cell. In the same way as our skeleton, our bones, working with muscles enables us to move, the cytoskeleton is a dynamic network that enables the cell to move both internally, so it enables cells to move materials and organelles within themselves, and it also enables the cell to move their membrane so that they can do things like endocytosis, where cells can engulf things by moving their membrane, or also moving their entire bodies. This is an organism called an amoeba, and it moves by extending um, parts of the membrane over the surface, enabling it to crawl. How does it do that? Through the cytoskeleton. What are centrosomes and centrioles? Centrosomes are the organelle. They contain two centrioles, and the function is creating spindle fibers, that's what these are over here, that separate chromosomes during mitosis and meiosis. Are you looking for a better way to study for the AP Bio exam and to get an A in your AP Bio course? At learn-biology.com, we've got exactly that. We've got quizzes, we've got flashcards, we've got interactive tutorials that'll help you master the material that you're studying. We have comprehensive reviews for the AP Bio exam. We'll help you switch from overwhelmed to outstanding student. See you on learn-biology.com. The parts that we've talked about so far have all been represented within animal cells, but most of those parts are also found in plant cells. The one exception is the lysosome, unique to animal cells. Let's describe the function of the central vacuole, this large structure right here. It's only in plant cells. Its functions include water storage, storing and releasing macromolecules, sequestering waste products, and maintaining turgor pressure. We'll talk about this in the context of osmosis, the movement of water, but as water flows into a cell, it creates outward pressure that keeps plant cells full, firm, upright, they're not wilting. Describe the evolutionary origin and function of chloroplasts. Here are chloroplasts over here, Here's a single chloroplast. Chloroplasts are the endosymbiotic descendants of free-living photosynthetic bacteria, and that's why they have their own DNA, their own ribosome, that's why they have two membranes. Their function is creating carbohydrates through photosynthesis. We're gonna leave their detailed structure and how they work for unit three when we discuss photosynthesis. Describe the chemical composition and the function of the plant cell wall. The cell wall is composed primarily of cellulose, which is a polysaccharide. It's that polysaccharide that we can't digest, but which ruminants, cows, goats, can digest because they have these symbiotic relationships that enable them to break that down and release food energy. 
The major function of the cell wall is it acts as a pressure vessel that prevents overexpansion in response to inward flow of water, osmotic pressure. So here we see as water flows into a plant cell, the central vacuole will expand and it'll look like this. The cell will be full of water and that water will push against the cell wall, keeping the plant cell full and firm, avoiding wilting. So that's a good thing for the plant. And the cell wall is the primary component of wood and the water conducting tubes in plant stems. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.